Have you ever wanted to put embroidery on an item that just wasn't hoopable? If so, embroidered patches may be the answer for that problem. My name is Monica. I'm from Oma's Place and I am here to share with you um, how easy, fun and fast embroidered patches are to make. You only need a few supplies and the outcome usually is great. What you need is some kind of stabilizer. The stabilizer needs to be water soluble. I have violin here. It is kind of a medium woven stabilizer um, that's really easy to use. Another one would be Batch Master. Batch Master looks and feels a little bit like a thin vinyl. Um, it, is, it can just be torn away from the outer edge uh, later on and it, and it does really, really well. What you also need, of course, is fabric. And the important part with fabric is that you choose something that will hold up to the embroidery without puckering. I have found the absolute best for making patches is uh, something called twi uh, Patch Twill. Patch Twill has a shiny polyvinyl backing and in the front the fabric has a really beautiful sheen to it. It is very smooth so when you stitch on it it will hold up to the stitches just beautifully. Um, also usable is uh, regular twill as long as you reinforce it with maybe woven fusible interfacing, medium weight I'd go with, and you can also do the same with a quality cotton. You could try felt, I haven't personally haven't, um, maybe suede would work, but in all cases always be sure that it's something that wouldn't pucker when you put the embroidery on top. All right, and lastly, you will need some kind of bonding agent so that you can place the finished embroidered patch onto the item that you want to have it on. I like to use um, Heat and Bond Ultra Hold. There are other ones out there that you can try. It seems to me that this one holds the best, but you may have other ideas about that. Those are the three items you need, and of course you need one of our designs, right? Okay, we are making it easy for you. We are making one available for free in our freebie section. And the ones, one you are going to be downloading from there is called Best Grandma Ever. Um, all right, let's get started. You're going to hoop your stabilizer. And your first color that you stitch will be stitched directly onto the stabilizer. You can see here, I used a little darker color so it would show up for you. It is the outline of the patch. Once you have done that, what you will do is you will take your pre-cut piece of fabric, place it over the um, outline, make sure all stitches are covered, and then you just tape it down with a couple pieces of tape. A couple pieces of tape return it to your machine and what it will do is it will tack down that piece of fabric and just like you would do with an applique you are now going to go take your curved tip scissors and you're going to go around taking off the excess fabric from the outside of those tacked down stitches try to get close don't be too worried about cutting into the thread um, it is a triple bean, so if you cut one of those, that's not too disastrous. And just go all the way around, trimming away the excess fabric. I'm almost done here. Okay, and there we are with the excess trimmed off. That one is, for some people, this may be a little tedious to do, to be trimming it away while the fabric is in the hoop. You could also use a PDF template that's included with your download. Uh, print that out, cut it out, and then use it, use it as a template. And 
uh, on, use it on the fabric that you're going to use, place it on top of the fabric and cut around the template so that you have your shape already pre-cut and you don't have to worry about doing it in the hoop. When, if you use this method, then you're going to place that inside the placement guideline. This one here. You're going to place this right in there. Before you do, I recommend that you just put a small amount of adhesive spray on here and then place this on there. That way you are sure it won't move when the satin edge gets stitched. Okay, so either one of those methods should work fine for you. Once you do this, it goes back on the machine and you will be stitching the outside edge here of this patch. Then just follow the prompts on the machine as far as the rest of the center design. But all of our patches will have the basic patch with the satin edge stitched first and then comes the center design. Once you have stitched the design fully, unhoop it and remove the, uh, remove the stabilizer. Now with the violin I just trim up close and then remove the rest either with a little q-tip or with um, a damp rag. Let it dry completely with the badge master all you have to do is just pull it away from the outside there should be no residue left at all that you need to worry about either one of those stabilizers work well see which one you like best all right so then we are left in the end with this particular little uh, patch but we want it to be attached to something, right? So we need to make sure that we have a bonding agent, some kind of backing that will allow us to do that. I used my template that I had and cut out a piece of the ultra hold. That piece of ultra hold would, gets then fused to the back of this patch. Okay, you can um, use the template to do that or you can use the finished shape, place it on your ultra hold, and with a pen or pencil go around the shape to make <clears throat> to then know how much to cut off the ultra hold. Either one of those ways is fine. Uh, once you have made one template and you want to make several more uh, patches, that's certainly then an easy way to go with a template to cut everything ahead. And if you want to make a whole lot of them, you may have a cutting machine. And we are also including an SVG file that you can use to do your cutting. Okay, so what we are left with is that we have to fuse the ultra hole to the back of this patch. When you do that, you want to be sure that you hold the iron in place long enough for the fusion to take place. Follow the instructions that come with the ultra hold and um, just make sure it's really well adhered so that later on it will adhere well to the item you want to put it on. Those patches are just great because you can put them on uh, caps without having to worry about a hoop special hoop for caps. You can put them on totes, on, on um, pockets that you can't get into, or would have to take off, embroider and put them back on, which is such a pain. So if you just make a, a patch and um, fuse that to the pocket, it's great. So um, my recommendation is that you try it we have the free sample out there, and I think you will like making these. They are so fun, so easy. Let this dry for a little bit after you pressed it. And then remove the paper backing. Still too hot for me to do that with this one, so let me remove it from another round, one that I have already made up here. I'm just going to remove the paper and now I'm left with the ultra hold on the back. 
I will fuse this in this case just to another piece of fabric place it on top and with my hot iron go over it. A really good idea is to use a pressing cloth. Any piece of cotton will do. Or if you have um, a fancy pressing cloth, then you can use that too. In my case, I'm just folding over the extra fabric here I have. And with that in between, press down on the, on the patch. Be sure to press down very well along the edges so it doesn't come off along those. And once you are done, you are ready to put this on any item you would like to put this on. If you can, turn it over and press it from the back as well. Be sure you are staying on there long enough. Of course, you don't want to burn anything, but be sure you press firmly so that it has a good chance to stay on there. And that is all there is to making patches. Here we are. You want to be sure that you press well. That's what I want to stress with this. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching it. Please let us know what kind of patches you'd like to see. We always like to make things that our customers really are looking for. So would love to get your ideas. You can do so by um, writing us on our support desk and just uh, tell us what you would like to see. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.